Now to the contestants. This contest will come to you in five rounds. Round one, here are the rules. Most questions in this round require simple, straightforward answers. Some questions may require some explanations or more detailed answers. You have 10 seconds to answer your major question, and your answer must be one attempt only, meaning that you cannot start one answer and change it to start a different answer. If a team fails to answer their main question, I may pass the question on for a bonus to the remaining teams. The first team to ring their bell will have the opportunity to answer. New breed, let's hear your bell. AGCM. DLCF. Thank you. Please note, a correct answer to a main question is worth three points. A correct answer to a bonus question is worth one point. A wrong answer to a bonus question will cost you a deduction of one point. Please note that this is the grand finale. Precision and accuracy will not be compromised. Best wishes to you all. We begin. Whenever believers rise to do something great for God's kingdom, they face diverse kinds of opposition. A classic example is the various oppositions that came at the returnees from the Babylonian, Babylonian captivity when they started rebuilding the temple of God as they documented in Ezra chapter 4. To all teams... I need you to mention two examples or kinds of opposition people would normally face when they rise up to build something great for God and link it to specific instances in Ezra 4 where the, where the same kinds of oppositions, opposition was faced. New breed. So, I need this from you. Two kinds of opposition people would normally face when they rise to build something great for, for God and the respective instances where the builders of the temple saw the same kind of opposition. Okay, so when the church begins to build, the gates of um, the people of the world tend to rise up against it. That, that's what Jesus said when he said that um, if they hated me, they also hate you as well. So because the world hates us, they also oppose us. So anything that the church rises up to build, the, the um, people of the world will oppose it. And that was seen um, with Samarat and Tobiah when they opposed Nehemiah and the people of Israel. No, I, I won't accept that. AGCM, proceed. Okay, so um, yeah, um, when when people rise to to work the works of God, like uh, the temple, um, so we see a classical example that the people who were around um, the enemies of Israel, they reported the people of Israel who were building a temple to Darius, and um, uh, we see that. Um, there was opposition from authority, and that led to a halt of the temple for for some years. So um, there is um, people will always try to influence authority to fight against us when we are building the church, and also people are going to speak evil words, which will try to discourage us from doing the work of God, as happened in Ezra chapter four. I'll give it to you. <laughs> DLCF. DLCF, proceed. Okay, so when we do God's work, people try to weaken um, our hands in doing the work of God. In Ezra, we saw that 
when they started building the temple, um, the foundations of the house of the Lord, some people came to them and then asked them that we want to build with you because you have been sacrificing unto your God since you left in the, in the days of Ezahadon, king of Asa. And then the people did not allow it. And because of that, they weakened their hand in building their faith. Okay, and secondly too, um, they, they could even go to the extent of writing accusations against us as believers to those in authority. And this happened in Ezra where Rehum, the chancellor, and Shimshai, the scribe, together with others, wrote a, cons- wrote a letter to Ataxerxes, the king, so that uh, trying to accuse the Jews as they are, they are building a bad and a rebellious city. And when they are successful in building that, they will, in the end, they will not pay toll and they, they will fend themselves and fight other nations as well. So this is what they did. I'll give you two. Okay, so let's go over some of the answers that were expected. There's deception and there was, um, there was deception in that the priest was sent to them to teach them the ways of God. Like you said, those who wanted to build the house of God, the Samaritans who wanted to join to build the house of God with Israel, they, 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 were, they said they sacrificed to the God of Israel. However, even though they did that partially, they also sacrificed to their own God. So there was a case of deception, which led to discouragement. Okay, so they discourage the people from building the temple. You can link that to there was a case of accusation, there's a case of lies, conspiracy, and the decision of worldly leaders, which was said by AGCM, and then there's op- oppression as well. So I'll leave the rest for you to do as homework. Let's move on. <laughs> Preamble. The statement, be fruitful and multiply, appears six times in the Bible. New Breed mentioned the first and second times the statement appeared in the Bible as accurately as possible. Okay, so the first instance was in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. After God had created man, he gave him a charge to be fruitful and multiply and the second instance is um, the, after the flood, when Noah came out of the air, God gave him a child to be fruitful and to multiply. No, no, it's not acceptable. AGCM mentioned the third and fourth times the statement appeared in the Bible as accurately as possible. Okay, so um, the third time is after Noah came out from the flood um, when he made the sacrifices to God of the clean animals and God um, God showed him his sign in the clouds which is the rainbow and he told them to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and the, the next time is with Isaac I'll give you one point DLCF mentioned the fifth and sixth times. All right. So let's go over the answers. The first happened in Genesis 1.22. On the fifth day of creation, God After God called the fishes and the birds into being, he blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. The second, Genesis 1, 28, on the seed day of creation, God created man, he blessed the man and said, Be fruitful and multiply. The third, Genesis 8, 17, after the flood waters of Noah dried up, God asked Noah to come out 
from the ark together with every living thing that was in the ark so that those living things will breed abundantly in the earth and be fruitful and multiply. The fourth, Genesis 9, the verse 1, after Noah and his family came out of the ark, God blessed Noah and his sons and said, be fruitful and multiply. The fifth, Genesis 9, the verse 7, after God gave his command concerning the repercussions of murder to Noah and his son, he said again to them, be fruitful and multiply. The sixth, Genesis 35, the verse 11, when God appeared to Jacob after he came out of Panda Aram, God blessed him, changed his name, and also told him, be fruitful and multiply. <laughs> New breed. According to the book of Leviticus, the second phase of the cleansing of a healed leper who is poor required the following items. A. Two clean beds. B. A male lamp. C. One-tenth one of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil. D. A log of oil. As detailed as possible, state the roles each of the items played in the cleansing process. So for the two clean beds, um, one is killed under running water, and then with cedar, scarlet, and with cedar and scarlet and high soap, the living bed is dipped in the blood of it and is sprinkled on the clean leper. Then the leper is made to shave himself. Then the leper then offers the meal lamb. A meal lamb is offered for the sin, for a sin offering, with the one tenth of an ephah. And with mix the log, log of oil, which is going to be a sweet aroma offering unto the Lord. Hmm. No. No. AGCM. In the early days of Israel's entry into the promised land, two families, A and B, came to offer offerings which did not involve animals, and their items were very similar. All, although both offerings were received by the priest at the altar, families, family A's offering was wholly taken away by one of the sons of the priest. With family B's offering, a portion was bent on the altar, after which the remainder was also taken away by the sons of the priest. A. What is the most appropriate name or description for the offerings of family A and B? And B. Identify the most likely composition of the offering of each family, which explains the reason for their respective treatments. So, um, both family A and B, they are, they are offering green offerings and... Um, family A's composition, you have one tenth of an ephah, um, yeah, one tenth of an ephah only, and B, we have, um, we have one tenth of an ephah, um, one fourth of a hint of oil, and one fourth of, we have, um, is mixed with frankincense, so, yeah. No, I won't accept it. <laughs> DLCF, you had a rare opportunity in a ninth vision to travel back to a day in the third month after Joshua and Israel arrived in the promised land. You landed in Shiloh, where the tabernacle of Moses had been set up. And you saw at the brazen altar two non-animal offerings, A and B, by the altar. When the priest came to attend to them, offering A was wholly bent on the altar and none was left. With offering B, however, a portion was bent on the altar and the remainder was taken away by the priest afterward. What are the most likely identities of offering A and B and why?
So please, um, the identity of the offering A is the oblation of the first fruit. And God commanded them that when they bring the oblation of the first fruit, it shouldn't be burnt on the altar. And the um, identity of the offering B is the um, meat offering. It's a meat offering. And that one, it is when they bring it to the priest, the priest takes a handful and burns it as a memorial unto the Lord. And then the rest is given unto the priest. And also, in addition to that, the priest actually takes just a handful of the fine flour mingled with oil, with all the frankincense of it, and then that's what is bent as a memorial to the Lord, but the rest is for the priest, and then, yeah, it's for the priest. No, DLCF, you appear to be answering the question for AGCM. Okay, let's go over the answers. So... For new breed, we have two clean beds. One was offered as a sin offering and the other as a bent offering. One male lamp was offered as a trespass offering. One third of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil was offered as a meat or grain offering. The log of oil waved before the Lord together with the lamp of the trespass trespass offering. Some were sprinkled before the Lord seven times. Some put on the tip of the right ear of the healed leper and also on the thumb of the right hand and big toe of the right foot. The rest is poured on the head of the healed leper. Okay. AGCM. The most appropriate description description or name for the offerings. Offering A is the first fruit offering and B a grain offering of first fruit. So with offering A it contained ripe fruit. It may have also contained living or honey and so was not bent on the altar. With family B's Offering it contained grains from green heads, unripen, unripen, non living, no, no living, nor honey. And as a grain offering, a portion was bent on the altar for a sweet aroma to the Lord, and the remainder was given to the priest. DLCF Offering A is a grain offering of a priest. Offering B, a grain offering of an individual. With A, the Lord instructed in Leviticus 6.23 that no grain offering of a priest should be eaten, but should be wholly bent. With B, the law of grain offerings says that the priest shall take a handful of the grain offering with its oil and frankincense and burn it on the altar for a sweet aroma as a memorial to the Lord and the remainder shall be given to the priest to eat. Moving on, new breed. Narrate the first persecution of the early church recorded in the book of Acts by mentioning the following details. A. The chapter in the book of Acts it began. B. Who exactly were arrested. C. The immediate event which triggered the persecution. So the chapter is Acts chapter 4. And the people who were arrested were Peter and John. And they were, they had raised, um, they had raised a crippled man who was at the gate to be called beautiful. And the people, the scribes and Pharisees, what have a charge against them and about the name they were using to raise up the cripple? I'll give it to you. AGCM, narrate the second persecution of the early church recorded in the book of Acts by mentioning the following details. A, the chapter in the book of Acts, it began. B, who exactly were arrested, and C, the immediate event which triggered the persecution. 
Okay, so um, it is found in Acts chapter 5. And we have the, the disciples or the apostles of Jesus Christ who were the ones persecuted. And um, what, what led to the arrest was that they were coming daily into the, into the temple and they were teaching the people of, uh, about Jesus Christ. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees, um, uh, they came together and arrested them because they said that they are putting the blood of this man on our heads. They are reminding us of his death. I'll give you two. DLCF, explain in detail how the apostles got released from their respective arrests in the first and second persecutions. Okay, so for the for the very for the second for the second persecu for the for the second persecution what happened was that when they were in prison the angel of the lord came in and then set them the angel of the lord miraculously set them free and asked them to go back to the temple and speak all the words of this life that's to say they should continue the preaching but for the first persecution where peter and john were taken they were they were chastised they were beaten and then afterwards commanded that they should not preach anymore in the name of Jesus. And that's how they were let go. No. No, I, I won't take it. Let's go over the answers. So for, for AGCM, the event that triggered the persecution, there was an outbreak of miracles, signs and wonders wrought by the hands of the apostles including Peter's shadow, healing the sick and multitudes gathering from surrounding towns with sick people who were all healed and the increasing growth in numbers of believers. That's what triggered it. DLCF. The first persecution after finding no way of punishing them because of the people since they all glorify God for the miraculous healing of the lame man at the beautiful gates they let them go okay then the second persecution they were arrested released rearrested and released so for the first release the angel of the lord opened the prison doors and brought them out you mentioned that for the second instead okay and for the second release after Gamaliel's profound speech to leave them alone, they beat them, charged them not to speak again in the name of Jesus and let them go. Moving on. New breed. The following sequence of numbers concern a story which is recorded in the book of Judges. Indicates what each number represents in the sequence. 32,000, 22,000, 10,000, 9,700. 300. Okay, so there are 3,000. This, this is a story of Gideon and when God, when the, and the people he, um, the people of Israelites, when they were supposed to go and make war against the Midianites, the f original army consisted of people who numbered 32,000. Then after God told them that they should cut, the number is too much for him so that when he gets a victory, the glory gets to him. So he said that those who fear, they should go. So that's what led to the 22,000. And after that, God said, still the army was too great. Then they went to the river to drink. And God told Gideon that at the river, um, those who laugh like a dog, they will be selected. But those who um, knew them, um, drink from their hand, they will be disqualified from the army. So that's the 10,000. I'll give you one point. AGCM, the following is a sequence of places extracted from Paul's first missionary journey. Mention one major event that happened at each place in the sequence. We have Paphos, Pega, Antioch in 
Pisidia, Pisidia, and Lystra. Okay, so at Paphos, they met by Jesus who resisted the preaching of the word to Sergius Paulus. Then at Perga, John Mark departed them. Then also at Antioch, they were beaten to the point of death. Then from there, they went to Lystra. Okay, uh, and at Lystra, um, they were taken to be the Lyconian gods which have manifested in flesh after they had killed a crippled man. So um, Peter was beaten almost to the point, uh, uh, sorry, Paul was beaten to the point of death at Lystra. And when the disciples had gathered around him, he woke up. I'll give you two. DLCF. The following is a sequence of words. The following sequence of words tells stories in a sequence which are found in the same chapter of a specific book in the Bible. Indicate which story each of the words tell in the sequence. The plant, the worm, the east wind. You have been bailed out. Let's go over the answers. New breed, 32,000. The original number of soldiers Gideon arranged to fight the Midianites. 22,000, the fearful ones who were made to return home. 10,000, the bold ones who remained after the fearful had departed. 9,700, those who got on their knees to drink at the water test. And 300, those who lapped the water with their tongue as the dog laps. And who were those the Lord used in the battle against the Midianites? Your presentation lacked clarity. So I gave you one. Um, AGCM. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so at Paphos, as you mentioned, but Jesus tried to obstruct um, Sergio Paulus from converting. That's credited to you. At Pega, John Mark leaves Paul and Barnabas. At Antioch in Pisidia, they stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas. And so they left to Iconium. There was no beating happening there. It was in Lystra that the beating happened. Okay, that's why I gave you two points. Now to DLCF. The plant. The worm. The east wind. All this has to do with Jonah's anger at the Lord for sparing the people of Nineveh. He went outside the city and sat at the shade to watch what would become of Nineveh. So the plant, the Lord prepared a plant and made it come up over Jonah that it might be shade for his head to, live, to deliver him from his misery. And Jonah was grateful. The worm, as morning dawned the next day, God prepared a worm which damaged the plant till it withered. The east wind, when the sun arose, God prepared a vehement east wind and the sun beat on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. Then he wished for himself death and said, it is better for me to die than to live. <laughs> Preamble, please listen carefully. The following passage is an extract from Revelation chapter 21 verses 2 to 6. Fill in the blank spaces to complete the passage. New breed. Then I, John, saw Dash coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as Dash. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, Dash, and he will dwell with them, 
and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. So, um, the first dash is New Jerusalem. The second dash is the city of the Lord. And the third dash is the Lamb. I won't accept it. AGCM and God will dash there shall be dash there shall be no more pain for dash and God will wipe away their tears there shall be no more evil I'll give you one point DLCF. Then he who sat on the throne said, Dash. And he said to me, Dash. And he said to me, Dash. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who tests. Okay, the first dash is, I make all things new. The second dash is, Right. For the second dash is right. Yeah. I'll give you one point. Let's go over the passage. Revelation chapter 21, verses 2 to 6. Then John, then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven. From God prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. New breed, but second consideration, I'll give you one point. I continue, AGCM, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. King, okay. I gave you one point. It's not as precise, so I gave them one point. Sure. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said... Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of water of life freely to, he, to him who tests. Moving on. Preamble, please listen carefully. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 says, Everything has a time, and they are detailed in verses 2 to 8. I'm going to mention one of these verses to you, and you are to accurately state all that was mentioned in that verse about times. New breed, verse 3. It's a, a, a time to laugh and a time to cry. <laughs> you great. <laughs> you should be crying by now. <laughs> AGCF. AGCF, verse 5. Okay, so there's a time to gather and then also gather stone together and then also a time to scatter. I'll give you one point. <laughs> D 
TLC Air. Verse 7. You can see a time to, we say a time to mourn and then a time to rejoice. Please come again. I didn't hear you. A time to mourn and a time to rejoice. No, no, that's incorrect. So, verse 3 a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. Verse 5. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Verse 7. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. Preamble, please listen carefully. In Colossians chapter 1 verses 14 to 18, the artist mentioned many things about the personality and ministry of Jesus Christ which could be titled the doctrine of Christ. New breed, mention one aspect of the doctrine of Christ stated in the reference verses. Okay, so he says that he's the first one of all creation and he's preeminent over all creation. I'll give you one point. AGCM, mention another. Okay, so in verse 14, he says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. That is correct. <laughs> DLCF, mention another. Okay, he said he was, he was before all things. And by him all things exist. Please come again. He was before all things, and by him all things exist. Mm. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. Okay, so let's go over the answers. Let's go over the answers. His redemptive work, which you stated, AGCM stated in verse 14. His bodily features in verse 15. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. His, his creative work. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. Then his pre-existence and power. And he is before all things and in him all things consist. So I gave this to DLCF. And I'm taking back my points from New Breed. Thank you. Let's move on. Preamble, please listen carefully. Both Israel and Judah became captives of foreign nations as recorded in in the Kings and the Chronicles. New Breed, mention two differences you can find between the captivity stories. So, for, <coughs> for Israel, Israel was captured by Saul, Manasseh, king of Assyria, and they were deported to the cities of, uh, they, they were deported to ha- the harbor, Hola, the rivers of Gozan, and the cities of Medes. And for Judah, they were captured by Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they were exiled to Babylon. Come again with your answer. So, Shalmaneser, the king of Assyria, captured um, the people of Israel, and they were exiled to Hola, the harbor, the river of Gozan, and the cities of Medes. But for the Judah, those of Judah, it was Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, who captured them, and they were exiled to Babylon. I 
I'll give you two points. AGCM, mention another two. So, for Judah, it was going to be for a stated period of time. That is 70 years. But for Israel, it's not stated. And for, for Judah, it happened in three phases. Um, for Israel, it happened in one phase. And for Judah, it was during the... Mention two. Um, Dylan with... Benjamin, please speak up for me. I'm struggling to hear you. So repeat the exact answer you yes. gave. I said that for, um, for Judah, it was going to be for 70 years. But for Israel, it was not for a stated period of time. And for Judah, it happened in three phases. In Israel, it, it happened in one phase. I'll come back to your answer. DLCF, mention two. Okay, so Israel's captivity happened first, and then Judah's captivity happened secondly. And also in Israel's captivity, they were actually also scattered abroad towards various nations on the earth. But for Judah's captivity, most of them were just sent towards Babylon. Repeat your answer, please. For Israel's captivity, it happened first. It happened before Judah's captivity. And secondly, in Israel's captivity, most of them, some, they were actually scattered across nations on the earth. Some of them were scattered across the various nations on the earth. But for Judah's captivity, most of them were actually, they were all sent to Babylon. Yes. I'll come back to your answer. Let's move on. Preamble to you all, please listen carefully. With reference to Mark's gospel, indicate the following concerning Jesus. New breed, the first time he predicted his death and resurrection, and the chapter it can be found in. Okay, so um, he spoke to disciples and he foretold that he would die. Um, he was going to Jerusalem to be, um, to, be, be, to be taken by the chief priest, to be scorned, mocked, and crucified. And the chapter is chapter 11. That's incorrect. AGCM, the second time he predicted his death and resurrection, and the chapter it can be found. Uh, so it, is, it can be found in chapter 12. <laughs> That's incorrect. <laughs> DLCF, the third time he predicted his death and resurrection and the chapter it can be found. Okay, so he, he, told the, he told them, the, the apostles expressly, that he would die and then on the third day he would rise again. That's, and that's in, in Mark chapter, chapter 14. No, no. So the first time was Mark 8. Mark chapter 8. So after Peter rightly identified Jesus as Christ, Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed after three days and rise again. The second, Mark 9. Okay. After Jesus and his disciples left the scene where the lunatic child was healed at the foot of the Mount of Transfiguration, they secretly passed through Galilee and at that time, Jesus taught his disciples and said to them, The Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And after he is killed, he will rise the third day. Then the third time was Mark 10. After Jesus' encounter with the rich young ruler, 
and all that he taught his disciples from that story. Jesus and his disciples were on the road going on to Jerusalem. Okay? And Jesus was going before them, and they were amazed, but they followed Jesus in fear. Then Jesus took the twelve aside again and began to tell them of the things that would happen to him. Okay? And behold, we are going up. To Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priest and to the scribe, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles, and they will mock him and scorch him and spit on him and kill him, and the third day he will rise again. Preamble, please listen. In the famous Faith Hall of Fame, which is recorded in Hebrews chapter 11. Sixteen Old Testament persons were named. New breed, mention any five of them. So, um, by, by, by feet. But Isaac, something about Isaac. One Isaac, so mm-hmm. by feet. Isaac, blessed. Abel, Enoch, Abraham, Sarah, Rehab, and... Five. Mention five. I'll give it to you. AGCM, mention another five that has already not been mentioned. Gideon, Barak, Deborah. Abel, some women too. (laughs) I'll give you one. (laughs) And some men too. DLCF, mention five that has not been mentioned already. Okay, David, Samson, Noah, Enoch, and um, Deborah. Deborah. I'll give you two. Okay, so it also included Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Samuel, Rahab. Yes. <laughs> A leader in your church who recently vetted, who was recently vetted again to be a leader in the next batch of executives, just told you that he will not be a leader in the church again. In your conversation with him, he hinted that he was confident of becoming the next president of the ministry, but the committee has given him the same role he occupied previously. And so he is writing a letter to decline the offered position. New breed. What is your analysis of this situation and what scripture can you quote to admonish him to avoid making decisions outside God's will? Okay, so I'll say that in the body of Christ we is made up of different parts and we all play a different role. And the Bible says that the Spirit chooses the gifts he gives it unto everyone. That's from First Corinthians chapter twelve. And he gives it freely of his own choice. So I admonish him that um, we are serving God, not of our own ambition, and that everything that we do is to glorify God. So whether you are the president or you are the usher, no matter the role you are playing, everything should be done to glorify God. And you should serve God with all your heart and with all your capabilities. So I will tell him that in all things, no matter where he finds himself, he should just give out himself and understand that God's will is the best place to be. You might think that being the president is what is the best for him. But God, in his own wisdom, knows what is best for him. And you direct him there. And in the end, God rewards us based on what he has given 
But God and Ross has based on the work he has given to us, the assignment he has given to us, not on what okay. we want to do on our own. I'll give you two. <laughs> AGCM, after hearing a message on consecration during your last church service, Joanna, a course mate, who is also a member of your church, shared a, a situation of great concern with you. According to her, she has been close to two friends of different pedigree since level 100. One of them is well-to-do and supports financially in many things, especially in difficult times of the month, but doesn't want to have anything to do with church. The other, very spiritual and always encouraging her to live in godliness, doesn't have much and sometimes asks for help from her. She wants to have a positive response to the message on consecration, but she's afraid of suffering when she decides to let go of the unspiritual, unspiritual but helpful friend. What decision should she take? And what scripture can you quote to back your counsel? So, in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6, the scriptures make us understand that godliness with contentment is a great gain. So, even though, even though like per, his, per her condition now, you should be content with what she has and then as long as he has food and then she has clothes, that is enough to survive her. But rather, he shouldn't follow uh, riches, which will later vanish away. So you should rather be content with what she has and then keep on. I will accept it. DLCF. DLCF. Essie. Essie, a final year student and a lead singer in your church choir, recently told you about two people who have proposed to her. According. According to her, the one she really likes is not the church type, but has a good job and even owns a car. The other is a national service personnel. <laughs> the other is a national service personnel who was a leader in your church last year. He doesn't have much, but talks big, which he calls faith, although no manifestation has followed yet. What do you think should be a major factor in Ace's decision on whose proposal to accept, and what scripture can you quote to back your claim? Okay, so I, 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 I would encourage or advise here that marriage is something very important before God, and it's not a decision we can joke with. So first of all, she should take it to prayers, and then let the Lord lead her, because it's not a man to direct his steps. But then as a guideline, it's, she shouldn't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has light with darkness? And what concord has uh, God with Belial? And also, the Bible says in James chapter 4, verse 4, that if we'll be a friend of the world, then we'll be the enemy of God. So, although the person is affluent, but is not religious, um, it's the, person, she, the person who proposed to her may not be able to help her much spiritually. So, I encourage her to first take it to prayers, let the Lord guide her, and then she, will, she could marry a fellow Bible-believing brother. <laughs> I'll accept it. 
Last set of questions for this round. Preamble to all teams. Listen carefully. Consider the following Bible words. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding. New breed, which is your favorite? Wisdom. In a space of 30 seconds, quote in full six Bible verses which contain the word wisdom. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 17, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. James chapter 1 verse 5, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives freely without reproach. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 4, the Lord gives wisdom, from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Proverbs chapter 9, 9 verse 10. By wisdom, a house is, is built by understanding it is established. Getting in. We'll come back to your score. AGCM. Which do you prefer, or which is your favorite? Knowledge. Please speak up. Knowledge. In a space of 30 seconds, quoting four, six Bible verses containing the word knowledge. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. May the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, grant unto you wisdom and knowledge in all, in the knowledge of Christ Jesus. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 9, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. <laughs> and the knowledge of the Holy One is inside. I'll come back to your score. DLCF, that leaves you with understanding. In the space of 30 seconds, quoting full six Bible verses which contain the word understanding. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean on to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Job 28, verse 28. And unto man he said, the fear of God, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil, that is understanding. Second. Proverbs 9 7. By wisdom, a house is built, and by understanding, it's established. We'll come back to your score, and that brings us to the end of round one. At the end of round one, the scores are New Breed, 14 points. DLCF, 17 points. AGCM, 18 points. Before, before we proceed, Before we proceed with round two, there's a substitution on AGCM team. Kindly introduce yourself. Tell us what you're bringing on board. I am Uju Isaac Bente. Isaac, what are you bringing on board? We came to send the lights. So that is what I'm bringing on board. Very well. Round two, the speed race. Every question goes to all teams, and you all must race to be the first to answer. If you believe you have an answer, you must ring the bell to be called. Let's hear your bell, new breed. 
AGCM, DLCF. Thank you. By the time you ring the bell, you must be ready with your answer, else the next team to have rung will be given the opportunity to answer. Correct answer if you were the first to ring three points. Correct answer if you were the second to ring two points. Correct answer if you were the third to ring one point. Every incorrect answer minus one. You are not obliged to ring the bell if you are not sure of the answer. Again, remember that this is the grand finale. Precision and accuracy will not be compromised. Best wishes to you all. We proceed. According to Ecclesiastes chapter 2, Solomon expressed insecurity about his works, labor, and achievements. Holding all other factors constant, mention briefly A, the insecurity Solomon had about his achievements, and B, one example of how this fear played out in his own family. Okay, so the insecurity, he will leave his work and labor to someone who will come after him and he doesn't know whether the person will be, wi will be wise or a fool. And the example is Rehoboam's folly. After Solomon reigned peacefully over Israel and Judah for 40 years, his son Rehoboam through his folly of listening to his contemporaries instead of the old men who stood before his father, lost 10 of the tribes of Israel to Jeroboam, leaving only two tribes for David's line. Next question, what is the meaning of the Greek word philagaria, or philagaria, spelled P-H-I-L-A-R-G-U-R-I-A? means love of money. It's in the Bible. <laughs> Mention in full the eight Beatitudes as exactly as they were stated in Matthew Newbreed. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the, those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, so they, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are you when you are persecuted, when men revile or persecute you. Re rejoice, for great is your reward in heaven. LCF. Okay, he said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall, and shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. No. Is the bell gone? All right. So, for new breed, those persecuted for righteousness sake, the persecution has a cause. You left that bit out. That's the only thing that didn't score you. And then for DLCF, you swapped merciful with the pure in heart. It must follow the precise order. Let's move on. A 
at jo as at Joshua chapter 18, seven tribes of Israel were yet to receive their inheritance. So a lot cast on the division of the land for each tribe. Mention in order the tribes that took the respective lots from the first lot of the seventh to the seventh. Let me take it again. As at uh, Joshua chapter 18, seven tribes of Israel were yet to receive their inheritance. So a lot cast on the division of the land for each tribe. Mention in order the tribes that took the respective lots from the first lot to the seventh. Right, so the first lot, Benjamin, the second, Simeon, the third, Zebulon, the fourth, Issachar, the fifth, Asher, the sixth, Naphtali, the seventh, Dan. Mention the full list of parables of Jesus, which can be found in Mark chapter 4. The parable of the sower, the parable of light under a basket, the parable of the growing seed, the parable of the mustard seed. Next, identify who made this statement and give a brief background to, of the statement. Skin for skin, yes, all that a man has, he will give for his life. New breed. So that was after... Um that was a statement made by Satan in the presence of God when, after he had sent calamity um, upon Job's, Job's possessions, after that, that's his um, children, his livestock. And so after that, he came before God and God said that, um, she that even though he provoked him against me, he still remained faithful to me. But Satan replied then to him that skin for skin, um, a man would... Um, so that's why he made that statement. I will accept it. All right, so the emphasis here was that it was the second time he was returning to God. So moving on, one of the reasons why one of the reasons why John the Baptist rebuked Herod severally concerning his marriage to his brother Philip's wife was that there, there was a law in the Old Testament which forbade such act. What exact punishment did the Lord pronounce in that law against people who took their brother's wife like Herod? Right, so the punishment, they will be childless. Moving on, Nadab and Abihu offered strange fire before the Lord, and they were consumed. Chorus 250 men offering incense were, incense were also consumed for offering strange fire. Referencing the instructions God gave on the burning of incense, what difference can you tell in the reasons why the respective fires of both groups were deemed strange? All right, for Nadab and Abihu, they were Aaronites, so they had the right to offer incense. However, an incense with fire, which the Lord had not commanded, is what they offered. That was why their fire was deemed strange and unacceptable and foreign and sinful. For Korah and his 250, they were not in the line of Aaron, so they did not have the right to offer or burn incense before the Lord. 
So the fire Korah and his 250 offered was, was strange fire because the people who offered the fire were not qualified to offer it. Moving on, mention one major thing which happened at each of these stops in, in the Exodus journey. A, Shittim. B, Pai Hariroth. C, the Anon River. So in Shittim, the people began to commit Hodom with the daughters of Moab in Pai Hahiroth. Israel crossed the Red Sea, the Anon River. Israel destroyed the Amorites who fought them. Next, one day Jesus said, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. What was the immediate background story for this statement? So in John 8, as Jesus was speaking with many words, some of the Jews believed on him. So he said to those who believed on him, if you abide in my word and you, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. But the Jews answered him and said, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will, make, you will be made free? So Jesus answered them and said, Whoever commits sin is a slave of sin, and a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Consider the following sequence of places. Mountains of Ephraim, Shalisha, Shalem, the land of Benjamin, indicates A, the next term in the sequence, and B, the story the sequence represents in the Bible. So the next term in the sequence is Zuth, Z-U-P-H. The story, the sequence represents is the places Saul traveled in his quest to find the missing donkeys of his father. Moving on, how many years did it take for the following temples to be built? A, Herod's temple referenced in the Gospel of John. B, Zerubbabel's temple. C, Solomon's temple. Well, we have 46 years for Herod's temple, as according to John's gospel. Zerubbabel's temple, 20 years. Solomon's temple, seven and a half years. List in order, the people Jesus appeared to after his resurrection, as re <laughs> AGCM. So um, he appeared first to Peter, then to the apostles, then to um, then to five hundred men at the time. Then he appeared to James. Then he appeared to the rest of. The, uh, the rest of the disciples, and he appeared to Paul. <laughs> Is anybody else going? For the bell? All right. He appeared, yes, to Peter, then to the twelve. Jesus had many disciples. To the 12, that is necessary. The rest are all in line. 
Moving on. The place called Dalmanuta, spelled D A L M A N U T H A, is likely the same place called Magdala, or the two places should be near each other. What evidence in the Gospels can you cite to support the statement? All right, so in the records of the miraculous feeding of the 4,000, Matthew names the region of Magdala as the place Jesus moved to immediately after the miracle. And Mark names the region of Dalmanuta as the place Jesus moved to immediately after the miracle. So if both actors are citing these, then it means that it's either the same place or they are close by. Okay. Moving on, as exact as possible, narrate the parable of the trees, which is recorded in Judges chapter 9, verses 7 to 15. A, G, C, M. So, this parable was said by, yeah, um, by the last surviving son of, of, of Gideon, who is called Jotem. And he said, the trees came together that they want to make a king. So they first went to the olive tree. They, uh, and they said, olive tree, come and sway over us. The olive tree said that, shall I leave my oil, which is profitable to both God and man, and come and sway over the trees? And they went to the fig tree. And the fig tree said that, uh, and, and, they, and they said to the fig tree, come and be king over us. Said that, shall I, shall I leave my fruit, which is both pleasant to God and man, and come and sway over the trees? And they went to the vine. And the, uh, uh, and the vine said that, should I leave my sweet um, my sweet wine, which is both pleasant to God and man. And they finally came to the bramble tree. And the bramble said that, if indeed you make me king, then come and enjoy my seed. But then, if, um, if you do this in the seed, then let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cities of Babylon. I will accept it. Next question. Mention the three Mention the three main things in Second Corinthians which were described as godly. All right, so in the chapter one, verse twelve, godly sincerity. Godly sorrow, godly jealousy. Okay, those were the three. Moving on, a certain man in the Bible was known as Raymond the Berothite. B-E-E-R-O-T-H-I-T-E. What tribe of Israel is this man likely to come from and why do you say so? D-L-C-F. Okay, so it's not... He's not a pure breed from Israel. He's actually from Gibeon because um, he's part of the Gibeonites because the, the children of Gibeon had Beirut as one of their cities under Gibeon. No. No. All right. So... The tribe is Benjamin. The reason? A Beerothite is a person who hails from Beeroth. Beeroth is one of the cities which was given to the tribe of Benjamin to dwell in. Next, with reference to Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 17, mention two judgments the Lord pronounced against Judah because of their sins. So he said, I will bring distress upon men, and they shall walk like blind men. Their blood shall be poured out like dust. Their flesh shall be like refuse. On separate occasions, 
Abraham's chief servant and Jacob returned from Panda Aram to their homes in the camp of the Philistines. A. What difference can you spot in the manner in the manner of their respective returns? And B. What lesson can be can we learn from your spotted difference? DLCF. Okay, so at Padan Aram, um, Abraham's chief servant went there to look for a, a wife for Isaac. And then when he came, he came peaceably with um, um, Isaac's wife. But when Jacob was coming from Padan Aram, he was running away from Laban. He was running away from Laban and he took his two wives and then they, they came out. So what I can learn from that, what I can learn from that is um, when we go somewhere, we have to, we don't have to, we, we don't have to run away. We have to um, live peaceably with them and then... Um, I'll accept it. Yes, we have done it. Next question. As exact as possible, quote the text in Isaiah 65, verse 25. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. The dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountains, says the Lord. Last question. Complete the following statement with precision and accuracy. Acts chapter 10, verse 38, New King James Version. PLCF. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. That is correct, and that brings us to the end of round two. At the end of round two, the accumulated scores are New Breed, 16 points. AGCM, 20 points. DLCF, 21 points. Now to round three. Test of the day. In this round, all teams are presented with the same test. And you are have four minutes to present your victorious answers on the whiteboards provided. Ten points are at stake. Best wishes to you all. Please be upstanding. Turn over your sheets. Lift up the sheets. And let's read it together. Test for today. Prophet Zachariah saw many visions which are recorded in Zechariah chapter 1 to 6. Identify the visions with brief descriptions in the order that they were recorded. Ten points in total. You have four minutes to answer this on the whiteboards provided. Start work.
Contestants have presented their solutions. But before we go through what they have presented, let's see what was expected of them in today's test. There are two ways of identifying the visions of Zakaria, depending on whether you think some visions happen together or separately. If separately, this is how it goes. Vision of the horses, chapter 1, verse 8 to 11. It runs down to chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. So I'll just take the steps. So vision of the horses, vision of the horns, vision of the craftsmen, vision of the man with the measuring line, vision of the high priest, vision of God's servants, servant, the branch, vision of the lampstand and olive trees, vision of the flying scroll, vision of the woman in a basket, vision of the four chariots. If you, if you analyze the vision as together, this is how it looks. We have the horseman among the metal trees, the four horns and four craftsmen, the surveyor, the vision of Joshua the high priest, the golden lampstand and two olive trees, the flying scroll, the woman in the basket, and it ends with the four chariots. Now let's see what the teams were able to produce. New breed, you went for the latter option. You spoke about the horseman, so you get one point for that. Remember that it has to follow the order, so from then the next order you were able to state was the vision of the high priest. That's another point. The next was the golden lampstand and two olive trees. That information is there. That's another point. You skip the flying scroll and went to the woman in the basket. All together, you get four points. <laughs> AGCM, like new breed, you went for the approach that sees the vision together. So you also stated the horsemen. You get one point for the first step. The second, you stated the four horns and the four craftsmen. That's another point. You skipped the surveyor. Then you went on to talk about the vision of Joshua, the high priest, granted. You skipped the golden lampstand or moved it further down so it doesn't fall within the order. Then you move on to the flying scroll, which is another point. Then... Finally, the woman in the basket, that, that com accumulates to five points for ABCM. For DLCF, it appears that we are not looking at the same vision here. So, unfortunately, I'm unable to give you any points, so you score zero for that. At the end of round three, the accumulated scores are New Breed, 20 points. DLCF, 21 points. AGCM, 25 points. Round four, true or false? In this round, I'll be making statements to each team, and you are to tell whether the statement is true or false. A correct answer is worth two points. An incorrect answer will result in a deduction of one point. A team can decide not to answer their question, at which point it may be passed on to the next team, which rings their bell first. Same rules on points and deductions apply to a passed on question. Best wishes to you all. We progress. New breed. The main usage of the blood of the trespass offering in the second phase of the cleansing process of a healed leper was the sprinkling of the blood before the Lord and upon the healed leper. True or false? True. That's incorrect. AGCM. The main usage of the blood of the trespass offering 
In the second phase of the cleansing process of a healed leper was the sprinkling of the blood before the Lord seven times and the application of the blood to the tip of the right ear, right thumb, and the big toe of the right foot of a healed leper. True or false? True. That's incorrect as well. DLCF. The main usage of the blood of a trespass offering in the second phase of the cleansing process of a healed leper was the sprinkling of the blood upon the healed leper seven times and the application of the blood to the tip of the right ear, right thumb, the big toe of the right foot of the healed leper. True or false? False. False is correct. <laughs> Moving on. New breed. Three different persons are called Mephibosheth in the Bible, and they all had some form of natural relationship with King Saul. True or false? False. False is correct. AGCM, two different persons are called Mephibosheth in the Bible, and they both had some form of natural relationship with King Saul. True or false? True. True is correct. DLCF. The two persons called Mephibosheth in the Bible are both children of Saul. True or false? False. False is correct. New breed. The total quantity of gold David prepared for the building of Solomon's temple was one million talents. True or false? False. False is correct. AGCM. The total quantity of silver David prepared for the building of Solomon's temple was one million talents. True or false? False. Isaac, that's incorrect. The statement is true. DLCF. The quantity of hewn stones, iron, and timber David prepared for the building of Solomon's temple could not be measured. True or false? True. True is correct. New breed. The weeping of Nehemiah before King Artaxerxes. The request of Nehemiah to the king and the departure of Nehemiah from Babylon to Judah are all recorded in Nehemiah chapter 2. True or false? False. Lamuel, it is true. AGCM, the arrival of Nehemiah to Judah, the three-day rest of Nehemiah after his journey, as well as his inspection of the broken walls of Jerusalem, are all recorded in Nehemiah chapter 2. True or false? That's true. True is correct. DLCF. Nehemiah's clarion call to the people of Judah after his inspection of the broken walls of Jerusalem and the ridicule of the enemies of Israel about the rebuilding of the city are all recorded in Nehemiah chapter 2. True or false? True. True is correct. New breed. In total, five separate messages from the Lord came to Haggai. True or false? True. Lamuel, the statement is true. AGCM. The last two messages that came to Haggai came to him on the, on the same day. True or false? True. True is correct. DLCF. The last two messages that came to Haggai came to him on the very same day that foundation of the Lord's temple was laid. True. True is correct. 
preamble, listen carefully. Indicate whether the following statements are true or false concerning popular Mount Olivet discuss. New breed. The writings in this passage can be found in Matthew chapters 23 and 24, Mark chapters 13 and Luke chapter 21. True or false? False. Lamuel, false is correct. <laughs> AGCM. The writings in this passage can be found in Matthew chapters 24 and 25, Mark chapter 13, and Luke chapter 21. True or false? True. Isaac, it is true. DLCF. In all three references of the Olivet, Olivet Discourse, what has been termed the rapture of the church is explicitly mentioned by Jesus. True or false? It's false. False is correct. <laughs> Moving on. New breed. The story of Jesus healing the child who had a deaf and dumb spirit is recorded in Matthew, Mark, and John, but not in Luke. True or false? False. False is correct. <laughs> AGCM. The story of Jesus healing the child who had a deaf and dumb spirit it's recorded in Matthew 9, Mark 9, and Luke 9. True or false? False. Isaac, you don't sound sure, but it is correct. <laughs> DLCF. The story of Jesus healing the child who had a deaf and dumb spirit is recorded in Matthew 17, Mark 9, and Luke 9. True or false? It's true. True is right. <laughs> Last set of questions for this round. New breed. The scripture text. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them can be found in Revelation chapter 14, verse 13. True or false? False. false. <laughs> That's incorrect. AGCM. The scripture text. They sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the saints. Can be found in Revelation chapter 15, verse 1. True or false? False. False is correct. DLCF. The scripture text, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive of her place. Can be found in Revelation chapter 19, verse 4. True or false? False. Smart, the statement is indeed false. <laughs> And that brings us to the end of round four. <laughs> At the end of round four, the accumulated scores are New Breed, 27 points. AGCM, 35 points. DLCF, 37 points. 
before before we proceed with round five, we would like to invite King George, a member of Gamsu UG Local, our 2023 champions, to bring the trophy for this year's championship. Please put your hands together for him. Thank you, King George. All right. To my contestants, I hope this is enough motivation for you. <laughs> Round five. Round five. Riddles. In this round, there are four riddles. A set of clues will be read out to all teams on each riddle. And you have to draw my attention on your readiness to answer by ringing your bell. Let's hear your bell, new breed. AGCM. DLCF. Thank you. The first to answer rightly wins the points for the, that riddle. A riddle solved on the first clue is worth five points, on the second clue, four points. A riddle solved on the third or any other number of clues will be worth three points. If a team wrongly answers a riddle, you will be out of that particular riddle until the next. I really wish you all the best. <laughs> first riddle. I am a measurement of years. I am a measurement in full. I appear five times in the Old Testament. I featured in the false prophecies of Hananiah concerning Israel's freedom from the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar and the return of the vessels of the Lord's house. I was the distance between the time Amnon abused Tamar and the time Absalom went for his next ship sheriff. I was the distance between the time of the restoration of the Pharaoh's imprisoned butler, AGCM. Two years. No. I continue. I was the distance between the time of the restoration of the Pharaoh's imprisoned butler, and the time Pharaoh had his dream, which were interpreted by Joseph. Who am I? DLCF? Three years. No. All right. Two full years. Second riddle. Audience. The name of the game is Precision and Accuracy. Thank you. Second riddle. I have something to do with the number five. I am mentioned four times in the King James Version of the Bible and only in 2 Samuel. I am a specific body part which is believed to house vital organs whose wounding will result in death almost immediately. In other English versions of the Bible, I am translated as the stomach. I am that spot which was targeted by Abner, Joab, and others to kill people. Who am DLCF? The fifth rib. The fifth rib is correct. Ted.
Toledo. Tad Redo. I am I am a phrase of two words. I am a phrase of two words. I am generally accepted as the main English translation for the Hebrew word ga'al, spelled G-A-A-L. Although the instruction about me is found in various places in the law, the clearest instruction of me is found in the story of how Boaz became the husband of Ruth. In the New Testament, I am used as one of the descriptions of Christ. For becoming one, for becoming one of mankind to pay the full price for a redemption which only... AGCM Kingsman Redeemer. That is correct. I was on the fourth clue. Final riddle. Final riddle. Audience, please calm down. Final riddle. I am a phrase of three words. I am a phrase of three words. As a phrase, I am mentioned only once in the Bible. However, my last two words appear together two or more times in the epistles. I am the outcome of a joining and recreation. I am the name of the product which was created from the fusion of the two main races on earth by Christ Jesus, as stated in Ephesians chapter AGCM. Greek or Jew? No. Continue. I am the name of the product which was created from the fusion of the two main races on earth by Christ Jesus, as stated in Ephesians chapter 2. Who am I? DLCF. All right. The answer is one new man. One new man. And that brings us to the end of round five. At the end of this exciting contest, the accumulator scores are New Breed KNUST 27 points. AGCM KNUST. You put up a good fight with 38 points. Winning today's contest is DLCF KNUST with 40 points. Congratulations to you, New Breed, AGC.
CM, ultimately to you, DLCF, for winning this championship. Hello, viewers. Thank you for staying with us in the entire season of the 2024 National Championship. We believe you learned a lot about the Bible and also had some fun. The program was brought to you by MBQ Ghana in partnership with the Bible Society of Ghana. It was proudly sponsored by Sweet Music Pro Audio, Ghana's leading musical instrument store. Chango crowdfunding platform by Sari Insurance Brokers, XTK Ventures, Soul Impact Family Production, University of Ghana Business School, Volta Hall, Julie's Blush, Nicole's Fabric, Sweet Melodies FM and Pen TV, with support from various organizations, churches, and individuals. My name is Solis G. Amenegi. Your quiz, mistress. Up next is the presentation of our awards. Please stay tuned. Let's present the money first. Let's present the money first. Oh, please. Have you got the money? Have you got the money? Have you got the money?
Merci à vous. 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 Mer